Here is lesson 1 8. This is all about the coordinate plane and what we can do with the coordinate plane as far as graphing and every other thing. Now, this is lesson 1.8. This is the last lesson for chapter 1, so be expecting a chapter test pretty soon also. Okay. When we talk about the coordinate plane, we break it into four what we call quadrants, quadrants or sections, and we number them with Roman numerals. So this is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. Okay, notice that in quadrant 1, x is positive, y is also positive. Okay, in quadrant 2, x is negative, but y is positive. Let's talk about quadrant 3, x is negative, and y is also negative. And in quadrant 4, x is positive, y is negative. Okay, so don't forget, this is the x axis, here's the y axis. So this would be positive x, this is positive y, and I guess we might as well put negative y and negative x on our coordinate plane. Okay, let's go to the back. On the back we have some points that we are going to try to identify here. So point A, in order to get to point A, first I go in the negative x direction 1, and then in the positive y direction, 3. So this would be negative 1, comma, 3. Remember, these coordinates are x, comma, y. You always run, and then you rise. This way first, then this way. Okay, and I guess we might as well put this on here. Okay. Letter B. Positive x direction, 3. Positive y direction, 2. 3, comma, 2, both positives. Letter C, notice letter C is right on the x-axis, so it won't have a y value. So we have 1, 2, 3, and the negative x, comma, 0, y, because it never leaves the x-axis, so it doesn't rise in the y direction. D, 2 in the x direction, and negative 1 in the y. Okay, there's our four points that we've identified. Next, we're going to sort of work backwards from what we just did. Instead of identifying the points, we're actually going to graph them. So in our first point here, let's call this one, uh, we'll call this, let's see, we ended on D, so this will be E, F, G, and H. Okay, 2, comma 4, which would be somewhere in this vicinity right here. Let's call him E. F is negative 1, comma, 0, right there. G, 3, comma, 4. Whoops, 3, comma, negative 4. That's down here, my mistake. And finally, negative 5, comma, 5. Negative 5's here, positive 5 up here. Good. And that's H. Not necessary to connect the dots because we were just working on graphing points. So I hope that made sense. Remember, these are all x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. And you run before you can rise. So first, second. Okay? Let's go to the back page and talk about how this may be valuable to maybe a worker or someone owns, in this case, an apple farm. Okay, this is the information for some place called Ryan Hill's Apple Farm. We're gonna plot the information on the graph and we're gonna make sure we label the access and title or graph. Okay, so number of workers, we're gonna put that down here. Number of workers. Okay, and cases of apples picked, we're gonna put that up the side. So cases, of apples. All right. So whenever we had five workers, we pick seven cases of apples. So let's graph that. One, two, three, four, five workers, and we got five, six, seven cases of apples right about there. Okay, good. But whenever we had ten workers, we got fourteen cases of apples. So here's ten. 
And let's go up to 14, which is right about here. Okay. When we had 22 workers, we got 15 cases of apples. So 22 workers and 15 cases of apples. Whoops. That's backwards. When I had 15 workers, I thought that number seemed strange. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 15 workers, I got 22 cases of apples. That's better right there. Okay. And we'll go right about here. Yeah, that looks good. 15 workers, 22 cases of apples. Okay. 20 workers, I got 30 cases of apples. So let's write about there. Okay. Now, our job is to figure out how many cases of apples 25 workers could fill. Brian Hills has never had 25 pickers working at one time. Based on the graph and the table, what is a reasonable estimate for the number of cases 25 workers could fill? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to sort of sketch a little line through here. And notice it has a little bit of a curve to it. And we're going to guess that it curves upwards like that after this last point. So if you worked for this company or this orchard, it might be wise to graph this information and sort of estimate where it's going. Now, they've never had 25 workers working at one time. So if we graph this line and have it, well, I guess come out like this somewhere. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So 25 workers. Somewhere in this general vicinity of the graph right here. I don't think 40 cases of apples would be a poor estimation for what they could expect from 30 work or 25 workers. So I would say 40 is a half decent estimation anywhere in that vicinity, just based on where the graph's going to go. Maybe even higher, maybe 45. Okay. But this is an example of how graphing data can help you predict future. Uh, events or future um, pieces of information that might be useful to you. Okay, now this concludes lesson one eight. Like I said at the onset of the lesson, this was the last lesson for this chapter, so expect the chapter test pretty soon. And if there was anything that was a little confusing or you missed, please go back and watch that section.